kick the camera again. <laughs> Hey, and welcome back to the Little Brown Jug Show. I'm your host, Mikey Pedroza, and this is a place where I talk about all things swing and anything else I feel like talking about. I want to say a big thank you to everybody who watched my last video, where I took a bunch of YouTube clips that I love and I've been watching lately and commented on them. I really like doing that format for the show, and I will be doing another one in the near future. So if you out there have any clips you want to send my way and get my commentary on it, well then send it on over to me, and maybe it'll end up on the show. But for now, let's get into that first topic of this show. Norma Miller on the BBC. Recently, Norma Miller was on tour in Germany and the UK, and while in the UK, with the help of Scott Cupid and Swing Patrol, she hit up a talk show on the BBC. You may remember Scott Cupid was on a TV show called The Dragon's Den, which is the UK equivalent Hi, to what we have in the States called The Shark Tank. A week. I asked Scott what it was like when Norma was on set. Apparently, she had the entire BBC staff in pure amazement. They took her through a tour of the BBC, and Norma talked about how horrible today's music is and how non-danceable it is. I mean, is this not dancing? Am I not dancing? Am I not dancing? Am I dancing? And when asked about her age, she replied with, My dear, no one pretends to be 95. They without a doubt found out what we on the swing community already know. Norma is crazy fun. <laughs> da, yep. da, 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 da. On top of being on TV, she was also on the BBC radio, which I love that interview a whole bunch more. I feel like they took their time with her and really allowed her to elaborate on all of her answers. The links for both the TV interview and the radio interview are down below in the description so you can check it out and hear it for yourself. Some of my favorite moments of the interviews were when she tells the story of how she first danced in the Savoy on Easter Sunday was with Twist Mouth George. As she said in this interview, as she has in many other interviews over the years, she talks about Twist Mouth George as being one of the greatest Lindy Hoppers at the Savoy. Unfortunately, there's no film footage of this great dancer that everyone talks about, or maybe there is and we're not looking hard enough. And when she talks about actually going to Germany and seeing all these dancers dancing like Frankie, it inspired her to write the song Swinging Frankie's Way. I really connected with her when she talked about practicing all day long and going hard all day long and all the injuries and all of the breakdowns she had. An interesting part of the interview is when she talks about being in Hell's a Poppin' and all of the Whitey's dancers had to dress like servants just so they can be in the movie. I've really only spent a small amount of time with Norma, but never really talked to her. But hearing this makes me want to ask more questions about those social standards at the time. And of course, that weird moment at the end of the TV interview where they talk about J.K. Rowling's new book and how they're adapting it to TV and how they changed the ending. They seem really concerned and angry about that. She's like the UK equivalent to Oprah, apparently now. You don't piss off the Oprah, you don't piss off the Rowling. All in all, Norma was incredibly pleased with being on the BBC talking about it to all the people that she met and saying that she was on TV. Our next topic I got from a post on Facebook. Nick Plotz, a dancer from Georgia, asked this question. Hey, all of my dancer friends, especially those who are advanced. Do any of you have words of wisdom or advice on what to do? I have reached a point in my dancing where I feel stuck, not burnt out, just stuck. I feel as though I am in the middle ground of better than intermediate, but that I'm missing something from my dance to be in the advanced category. I travel quite a bit and I am still seeing improvement, but just not able to make it to that next level. I'm not quite sure what to do or where to look to move on. Well, Nick, this is a very common thing, as you already said in your post. Everybody feels like they get stuck or they don't know what to do next or they don't know how to get that next level feeling. Well, here are some of my ideas and some of my techniques, I guess you could say, on how I got to where I am. Now, none of the things in this list are going to for sure help you get to another level in your dancing, but you really have to find the way that works for you. It's just like learning. You have to find a way that makes sense for you to learn or all the things you just learned aren't gonna stick. So here's my list on ideas that might help you get to the next level. Start at the beginning. Try starting back as a beginner, not saying take lessons. You can, if you want to, take those beginning lessons, but just try to remember all those things you learned at the very beginning of your dance life. Sometimes you might find that you forgot an important feeling or a technique or an idea that you can take further into your dancing. 
You can understand where you're going, but only when you've understood where you've been. Teach what you know. Now, I'm not saying go out there and start lessons and weekly classes or whatever. Maybe take a friend or somebody that you know and teach them what you know. Make sure they know it's coming from you and it's the ideas that you've formed. Hearing yourself talk about dancing and talk about the ideas that you formed in your head out loud sometimes helps you figure things out. Because I know for me, in my mind, it's just a muck of things. And I sometimes I have these moments of clarity. But those moments of clarity really come out when I'm talking about it out loud. Private lessons. Now, I know a bunch of people have already said to you, take private lessons, take, take private lessons from this person and take lessons from this person. Uh, yeah, that's totally fine. And for me, I know it's helped just focus in on one thing. I'm not trying to get like 10 things and my money's worth in this one hour session with, with, uh, with a teacher. But really go to a private lesson with specific ideas, but also be open to whatever the teacher is going to give you. Also consider trying to take a private lesson from a follow rather than a leader. For me, I find a lot of the times that uh, hearing things from the opposite perspective helps me out so much more because I know what I'm trying to get to sometimes and I just need to get their feedback on what feels good, and what doesn't feel good. That helps a lot. Find a partner. Now, by find a partner, I don't mean, you know, you need to like do performances and do all this crazy stuff. No, I mean work and train with someone that you trust and that you can exchange ideas with and talk about your dancing. That way, again, you get that opposite perspective. But not only that, you're helping them and they're helping you. Just like dancing. It can't be just that one-way road. It's got to be that back and forth, that conversation that we love so much in our dancing. Ask questions. Ask your partners if they felt a certain feeling that you were going for. For instance, did you want them to do a double turn? Did you want them to put their weight into your hand when you grabbed onto their hip? Did you want them to be closer to you or did you want them to be a little more further out from you? All those different kinds of questions really help out. Be specific and also be willing to hear the feedback. Sometimes it can be very cringeworthy, but really take what they have to say about the subject. Take it as a perspective and see how it can help your dancing improve. Awareness. The ability to understand what you're doing in the dance almost at all times. Sometimes we go into that, like, what I like to say, going into the void of dancing and just kind of everything floats and everything feels great. But sometimes if you're looking to get to another level, you have to understand it from maybe uh, the other side of the brain as opposed to just that natural feeling artistic side. You want to think of it with an analytical side and maybe understand exactly what you're doing during a swing out or what you're doing during a very difficult move you just learned in a class. Always try to go for the awareness of where you are in the dance and how it affects your partner or to understand where your weight is at any given moment and to understand where your partner's weight is at any given moment. Because I think that when you have that awareness, you understand where you're starting from and then you can go to those variation changes and those rhythm changes and doing completely messed up things with your dancing but still understand what you're still doing. Copy your favorite dancer. Now what I mean by this is Find a dancer that you really, really admire and you like the way they move and you like the, the things they do when they're dancing. Try adapting all these movements and these ideas from this dancer and try to put them into your body and see how they feel. Some of the stuff is not going to feel great. Some of the stuff may feel awesome. To avoid being a copy of that other dancer, you should try to always adapting it to what your body can do. Like For instance, me, I love the way Peter Strom dances. And earlier in my dance life, I wanted to dance like him. But obviously there's differences in our heights. I mean, I'm the size of his leg. <laughs> but for me, I wanted that effortless movement and I wanted to move around my partner and make it easy for them to understand what I'm gonna do next. So I took those ideas and I added them to my body. And for a while, I remember, cause I could do a pretty good Peter Strom impression. And lastly, be weird. I love this dance so much, but I think for me, being weird is part of Lindy Hop. I love just being really wacky and weird and completely off the wall. And maybe it doesn't make sense, but maybe in my head it makes some sense musically. You know, go out there and just be kind of strange. Of course, be safe to your partner and to yourself and to the people around you at a social dance. But go out there and try new things. Maybe do things that aren't normal. <laughs> Maybe you never tried in your body. Be weird. 
So that last topic brings me to the question of the day. What has helped you get to the next level in your dancing? Has it been private lessons, taking more classes, dancing and traveling all over the world, Zen Buddhist meditation, roller skating, dancing to only 70s music, high diving from the top part of the high boards in an Olympic sized pool. I don't know what exactly I just tried to say there, but I think it made sense. I wanna hear what you guys have to say on the subject in the comments down below. You know I always troll those things, so I'll answer back to you and reply. And that's it. That's all I have for you today on this episode of Little Brown Jug Show. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you want to catch all my future videos and check out all my old ones. Like the video, follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and you can always catch me on MikeyPedroza.com. So that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you guys later. And all this talk about getting to the next level of your dancing just reminds me of that clip from Dragon Ball Z with Vegeta. It's over 9,000! God, I love that show! I think it's right.